Welcome back to a special outdoor edition of Switched to Linux. Obviously no live stream tonight, uh, mostly owing to the fact that in this beautiful location, I have really good download, I have abysmal upload, but uh, I just don't want to drive another day. I've driven about a thousand miles over the course of the last week, and so I'm just gonna stop. Weekly News Roundup is still on for tomorrow. We are gonna be moving tomorrow morning to uh, into a city, get some Weekly News Roundup done for tomorrow night. So stay tuned for that. Um, of course, if you are a supporter, we are holding a supporter hangout offline today. For whatever reason, video conferencing has just enough bandwidth, but no streaming, no streaming. Uh, what I want to talk about briefly today is really that best way to switch to Linux, just to test out and experiment with, uh, with Linux in such a way that we can cause this migration. As I switched to Linux, I didn't just completely delete my Windows and jump right into Linux and all this kind of stuff. I had to figure out how to make my business work when I pre-established business, my pre-established clients, I need to figure out how to make that work on Linux without any real issues. And so for me, it was a few year journey as I kept that one computer completely unadulterated and simply used other computers to test out Linux. Now you may not have the room or the budget or the desire to have a second computer and I understand that. So today we're gonna to talk about how you can play around with Linux very well without having to buy another device. You are primarily going to want to get an external hard drive. This one is a, one of the mechanical external hard drives. I prefer these ones. They're pretty fast, they're pretty good. They have good, really high data transfer speeds. They work really well and they're cheap. This one is a one terabyte, which I think you can now get for like 40 bucks. Uh, and the one terabyte is perfectly fine, especially if we're just testing things out and playing and seeing what you can do. So once you have your external hard drive, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get Linux installed on this. Now this can be a little bit more complicated. Uh, and the reason is when you install Linux on most distributions you're installing, you, it's really hard to say where does the bootloader install and how are you booting into your system. What I like to do, now it is possible under most Linux distributions to install the Linux on the same hard drive alongside one master boot record. I do not recommend that because if you go to update Windows and, um, and Windows says, oh, there's a grub on here, that's the software that Linux uses to boot your operating system, it says, I don't like that and it restores the Windows and Windows likes to ignore Linux. And so you will get to a case where you will be able to keep getting into your Windows, but you may not be able to get into your Linux anymore. So what I always want to do is I want to make sure I have everything installed on this drive. The whole operating system, my home partition, and the bootloader. That is really the thing that I want installed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my computer which disk to look for the bootloader. You see, when you start a computer up, it goes through a basic, now the thing used to be called BIOS, basic information, uh, basic input output system. So you get in there, it boots up just the basic high level stuff, and then this allows it to find an operating system, something on that first drive to say, oh, these are the operating systems, what would you like to boot? And so you can specify which one of the drives on your computer carries that bootloader. So if you install everything directly to this, your Windows system, you just tell the computer to boot the hard drive with Windows on it, and it just goes right into Windows, and you tell it to boot the hard drive with Linux on it, and it just goes right on into, Win into Linux. No big deal. Uh, and you can specify those changes in your BIOS settings. So depending on your computer, this is going to be different. Sometimes, usually it's really easy to change those settings. Occasionally you get a board that's a little crazy and out there. Sorry about those guys. You'll have to look up the documentation for your board. You're either gonna have, um, you might have the, like a Dell BIOS system, um, which I think they, are they using Athlon? I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. Uh, I uh, The MSI board, that I have controls the BIOS on my main streaming computer. That's the easiest. I have a nice GUI. I can move the mouse around. I can drag little icons. Ooh, we're gonna boot the external drive first. <laughs> so what I like to do uh, when I was, I was experimenting with Linux and I was still dual booting from time to time, 
What I would do is I would set my BIOS to look for an external hard drive like this, and if this is present, boot that first. And if this is not present, it will boot the internal disk first. So I would have this guy installed with Ubuntu on it, right? And I'd have this guy plugged in, and as long as this drive was simply plugged into that computer, it would always just boot Ubuntu. But if I really wanted to get back into the Windows system, I just pull this guy out from the port, just leave it sitting right there, just pull the plug out, boom, it boots right on into Windows. And so you change those BIOS and make those settings changes, and this is going to enable you to decide, am I going to use this full same exact computer to boot Windows or to boot Linux? Now we need to talk about Secure Boot. Inside that BIOS, there's going to be an option called Secure Boot. Depending on your Linux distribution, you might have to disable that. Now, Windows might throw a hissy fit if Secure Boot is disabled, or the BIOS usually does. It's okay. Um, it is a little bit more secure if you can run that. Now, um, Ubuntu ran that for a while. It, something in it had since broken it. So most uh, downstream from Ubuntu, you might have to disable that. They are working on it. I know Linux Mint in the next iterations actually has figured out how to fix that. Uh, so presumably that will be backported to Ubuntu as long as Ubuntu can do the same thing they did. You'll want to check the distribution information to see if Secure Boot is enabled. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the latest version of Debian it is. This just means you don't need to toggle that setting anymore. When I first started using Linux and teaching people to do it, you have to go in and turn off Secure Boot. That's no longer something we have to do. It's just be aware of it in case your choice distribution is having issues. Try toggling that Secure Boot off and see if that fixes your problem. So, you're not wiping out your computer. Let's go ahead and talk about how do you install Linux just to this. If you're on a desktop, this is easy. You open up the case, and for me, the simplest way to do it, I just open up the case and I just pull the, the uh, SATA cable to the hard drive that's in there. Install Linux, and then plug that cable back in, and then boot into your BIOS safest way to not break anything. If you have like a laptop or something with a soldered drive or something you can't get to the hard drive, you have to be a lot more careful because it's possible if you're plugging this guy in, you may have the option to choose your disk or it may just want to install it directly on the main hard drive. Depending on the distribution and the installer, even if you're installing Linux to this, it may always want to run the uh, the grub bootloader on the first disk in the computer. These are things I can't help with in this video. You need to look at your various options and figure out how to get the bootloader on this external drive. Simplest way, if you can unplug the hard drive in that computer just for the period of time that you install Linux and then plug it right back in, you will have no problems. That is the way you want to do it. So step four here is your first build with Linux, you're just getting in there to play. You're not doing anything serious. You're plugging this guy in and then you're just playing around. You're seeing what can work. You're logging into the few accounts you might need. You might play around with GIMP if you're used to Photoshop. You might look around at the various software packages. You might spin up LibreOffice to type a, a full-fledged Office document. The point is you want to play around with it, you want to explore, and you not, not want to worry about accidentally breaking something. Uh, if you do, just reinstall it or seek some help forms uh, one way. And then the last step to transition over is test around with different software. Look at what software packages you're using on your main Windows system and then go to like Alternative 2 and plug the name of those software packages in and then sort by the license and the operating system, sort in by Linux and and uh, free and open source and see if there's alternatives. It's very possible some of the software you're already using is completely supported on Linux already. Your web browser is going to be. I don't know of any web browser that's exclusive to Windows. It's not also on Linux. Your email client, depending on what it is, that might work. Thunderbird obviously works across different platforms. There's a few other ones. If you're using the full Outlook client, um, you're not going to get that on Linux, I don't think anyway. But have a look at Evolution, for example. Uh, just the idea is play around with the software. It may not be possible for you to make a 100% switch with the required work that we have to do, but certainly anybody who, who doesn't have very, very narrow niche hobbies 
anybody for their personal life can easily switch to Linux, and that is definitely something you should consider doing. So that really is, in a nutshell, our step. Step number one, pick yourself up one of these drives. Step number two, look at your BIOS. Can you set it to boot first on an external hard drive, and then the, uh, the internal drive if, if uh, the external one is not present? Do you need to toggle secure boot? Look for where that setting is and uh, just be aware of it as you're researching your distributions. If you need a Linux distribution, I just say play with Linux Mint. It's just gonna be the best overall for most people. And then once you get used to that, you can explore other Linux distributions as well. Play around with what's on there. Play around with installing software. Look for the software repositories. If you're using Linux Mint, there's just a tool in the menu called software. Everything in that is free easy to install and extremely safe. You don't have to worry about viruses or things like that. It's when you go out on the internet that you have to worry about things like viruses and stuff. And then start playing around and seeing, can you get to the position where you can transition your whole computer or do you need to just stick with your windows for, for your work? Or we didn't mention it because it's just not a forethought in my mind. If you're a big avid gamer, you might need that windows partition around. I don't know what your gaming situations are, but for most people, you can use Windows in those narrow cases you need, and then you can use Linux for everything else. When you get really advanced in Linux and have a good computer, oh, you can just install everything on Linux and then run a virtual box for all those things that need done with Windows. That's the best option you can do if you have to have a Windows install. So hopefully these tips helped you out with uh, a transition over to Linux. Don't be afraid to play around with things. And even if the worst case scenario, even if you're like not comfortable enough to install Linux on your system, download an ISO like Nopix, that's K-N, I think it's K-N-O-P-P-I-X. The reason I like that one is because you can plug that guy in, boot off of it, you never have to install it, and it has more software packages than you can play with for a couple months. And you'll get a chance to see what Linux can do with a lot of extra software. Some builds, you can't play with it a lot without installing it first. And so if you're worried about installing, play around with Nopix. You can play around with that Linux Mint Live ISO, that's fine. And you just need to download something like Etcher to install the, um, install the, the ISO. You download the .iso file from the website and then you just need a software to put that onto a USB drive. I will give one more piece of warning, that is that make sure you're downloading Etcher from a reliable place. Don't click an ad because of malvertising campaigns that are selling ads redirecting you to malicious downloads of the software. That happens not just with Etcher, it happens with all sorts of software you download on the internet for Windows, unfortunately. So just be aware of that. And uh, hopefully those tips will help you out in a quick transition to Linux. If you want more tips, subscribe to the channel here where we do a lot more detail and uh, get indoors with the computers and play with all the geeky stuff. But my supporters also love the outside videos as well. So I thought that's what I would bring you today. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.